Hello everybody. I'm very excited about this video. I'm going to talk about what remains of Drowned Atlantis and show you that a lot of it is still sinking. That's right, Atlantis hasn't finished sinking into the ocean and by Atlantis I am talking about this area here. Essentially there was a huge land mass here which was liberated from the ice and was a massive land mass for about 3,000 years before the oceans rose about 60 feet and all these pristine amazing lush river systems collapsed into the ocean as the ocean rose and you know archaeologists talk about Crete as Atlantis but I'm thinking you know there was a tsunami look look that that's nothing that's pipsqueak compared to what happened here this is this is the these are the ice sheets this is the old world of the ice age and for a time after this, there truly was a space for a remarkable civilization to have emerged. And, you know, I'm going to show you everything. So, this is the area we're talking about. The remnants of Ireland, UK, and bits of Holland which were connected to Doggerland. And it seems a successor culture to Atlantis would have been the Beaker culture. And you can actually look at these maps of cultures and in often they correspond to where modern countries are, where modern tribes are. And in this case the Beaker culture happens to correspond to Western Europe. So they talked about Atlantis being a confederation, a mighty power united into one, ten kings, and they made war on countries inside the Mediterranean. And this would have been connected up to a, a huge landmass here, so the whole area would have been very large. And this is why they describe the, the Empire, the Confederation, as quite enormous. Now, of course, these were just refugees. The Beaker Pottery isn't very good. Still keeping an eye out for better pottery in the past. I haven't seen any yet, but who knows? We're looking for it. This is Ardmore. I'm going to show you some photos. Ireland, this is a beautiful place, and I'll show you evidence of where there has been subsistence into the ocean in the past. And I really recommend you go here. This is an old monastery in the Roman style. Beautiful rocks on the coast, nice houses. And you see evidence of subsistence. Now, I was walking down here with a, with a tourist map, looking for St. Declan's Stone. Now, the legend is St. Declan. While they were unloading a stone he had brought from England with him, I don't know why, well, I'll give you a theory in a moment, it, it, it just fell off the ship and fell into the water. But if you examine this stone, it is actually a menhir, and it's just sitting there in the water. It was an old tomb. The whole area has been submerged. And you, you try walking up to it, it's very slippery, you just can't really get even close to it because you'll just slip over on this moss. I think the legend arose from the idea of Stonehenge being built in Ireland and transported over. They might have trans transferred those blue stones from Wales, and they might have brought those to Ireland, set up a stone circle. It was subsequently brought back to England. I think that's more likely, and that would fit the Geoffrey of Monmouth legend more likely than the idea it was set up in Wales. Again, it's, it, it's the centre of a tomb, an old menhir, and what's it doing in the water? You know. It's low tar, it's high tide, low, who cares? It, it shouldn't be there. It's in the wrong place. It's been submerged and there is lots, lots more land which has been lost to the sea, all around. Now indistinguishable from the continental shelf. And I'm going to show you example, after example, after example, city, after city, after city, in this area, yours truly, which has been lost to the waves. You see, you can't even get close to this thing. It's just in the wrong place. It shouldn't be there. It's not a stone that's fallen off a ship. It's an old tomb. Ardmore is beautiful. And of course, this is these are cliffs off Belfast. It's one of the rainiest places there is. And Ireland has the tallest cliffs in Europe, but the cliffs of Moher. You have cliffs also in Dover. Why, why does... UK Ireland have these cliffs. These are bits that have collapsed into the ocean, fitting the Atlantis legend. And Frisia as well. These would have been the hills of Holland, which are now almost underwater. 
This is, see, it was a huge area. It was enormous. This is Galway. I'm going to show you some examples from Galway. It's such a beautiful town. It's, it reminds me of like an old pirate town. You go into these pubs and they're playing amazing old music. Do you know what this is? This is Spanish Arch. And that's an old road, an old cobblestone road going under this one. There was storage here. And apparently there were another two or three more joined up on, on the right side here. And it was a tsunami in 1755 which was a result of the Lisbon earthquake, which wiped this off the map, which wiped this out. Look, it's gone, and then it was rebuilt to conceal the damage. And you see, it's all water now. I'm standing where the archway would have continued, but it, it would have been mud and water. The land has changed, even in the past 200 years. This former Atlantis is continuing to sink. It's continuing to be drowned into the ocean. You see that this is where Spanish Arch would have continued. It would have gone further than this, but now it's just a raised platform built around this to sort of prop it up or more would have collapsed. And just to show you how a tsunami or, or destruction can affect an empire, this was the Treaty of Tordesales, Tordesillas. Basically, in the 16th century, the Pope divided the world in half. He said, the Spanish can have this, the Portuguese can have this. Later, when they worked out uh, the exact dimensions of the round world, they added another line here, the Treaty of Saragossa. And this treaty was made two years after Columbus. Okay, So, it, it clips Brazil. So, Brazil is speaking, speaking Portuguese, the rest is speaking Spanish. That's the Spanish world. And, you know, a tsunami comes along, no more Portuguese empire, bye-bye. And we look at Heliog uh, Heliogland, right? Holy Land. This is off Germany in the, Nord in the North Sea. And guess what? The land has been changing. It has altered its configuration. And on Wikipedia, they actually show how it's changed just going to show you the difference here. So, Wikipedia claims that it has changed its shape. And if you look at this, I'm going to put it right next to this. I can't see how that can be superimposed onto that. It looks a bit different. Look, this area here corresponds to, to, I guess, that area there. It has sunk more into the water. The landscape has changed, even on Heliogland. It has changed, or Helgoland, whatever you call it, doesn't matter. Look, this is ongoing. This sinking. Another example, Leoness. It sank off Land's End so long ago that no one knows when it sank. And the legend is, if you look at Land's End, if you, if, you, if you concentrate on a clear day, the water is calm, you can see churches, cathedrals, drowned cities somewhere off Land's End. I don't know if it's true, but the legend is so old that no one knows when it sank. So I'm showing you example after example. Medieval stuff at Galway. I loved Galway because it's sort of like, this is where Columbus got his inspiration to look for the new world. This could be 1500s or medieval. I'm wondering if Columbus even saw this building. You know, this was Columbus's Galway. On these shores around 1477, the Genoese sailor Cristoforo Colombo found shore signs of land beyond the Atlantic. And he was standing here on this spot looking out, it might have been raining, and I'm pointing to America, the direction, and the sure signs of land beyond the ocean were this. This is a rope, and the rope is basically fixed in mid-air by the, the, the unceasing wind blowing from America. So Columbus was standing here and saying, this is really strange, you know, this wind, it just doesn't stop. So he was thinking, okay, I can go to America via you know, the trade winds south of the Canaries. I can come back 
on these sea breezes. And he sold this plan to the Spanish monarchs. Galway, amazing. And you walk around. I think this is Ardmore. This is in southern Ireland. And I noticed traces of old docks which have been submerged. Again, this is near St. Declan Stone. Things like this. And I've got better examples. So you walk down these steps of, of the newer dock and you find this. It, it, it's either been a quarry in ancient times, but why would you quarry something in the water? Or it's a dock or something. And I mean, look at that. What's going on? It's, it's, it's like the, the, an ancient dock has sunk. Bear in mind, this city has been inhabited for perhaps thousands of years, at least 2,000 years. Look how old St. Declan's stone was. It looks like an old slipway or something. Modern concrete on this, uh, below this modern structure, built on some older set of rocks, which may have had a dock. And I'll show you some evidence of it right here. If you look at this, these appear to be stones. I'm not sure if this is geology or this is man-made, but there is something going on here. And I don't know what it is. And now I'm going to show you more evidence. I told you, I told you I was going to show you Everything basically. St. Lucia's flood. This is ongoing. Doggerland sank. It, it, it was subsiding into the ocean for thousands of years, but the final straw seems to have been about 5000 BC. And so we have St. Lucia, Lucia's flood. I mean, this happened in uh, 14 December 1287. It killed approximately 50,000 to 80,000 people. It was in the North Sea. It affected Holland. And what happened was it converted a freshwater lake into the Wadensee, into a saltwater sea. 50,000 people died. The chronicles speak of 50,000 killed and total destruction. This is ongoing. This isn't stopping. Atlantis is continuing to sink beneath the waves. It says many villages disappeared forever. The current district of East Frisia alone, 30 villages disappeared into the North Sea. And as a result of this, it actually says the city of Amsterdam rose. And that's unbelievable. Look, I want to show you more. Wales now. Near the village of Anaslas. And do you see what's going on here? This is a submerged forest. These are tree stumps. The land has changed. Now, I don't believe these things are 7,000 years old. They're a lot more recent. Wales has, in chronicle time, lost three kingdoms. Three kingdoms have sunk beneath the waves. This whole area is unstable. It is continuing to sink. Look, a Breton legend of Brittany. The country of East is gone, or the city of East. Look, the flight of King Gradlon. They're running from the impending waves. And this is a... Look, the Atlantis story, it's like a Sodom and Gomorrah story, and so is this. It says here, the fall of Ys. Look, Ys was the most beautiful and impressive city in Europe, but quickly became a city of sin under the influence of Dahut. She organized orgies and had the habit of killing her lovers when morning broke. Saint Winwalo decried the corruption of Ys and warned of God's wrath and punishment, but was ignored by Dahut and the populace. One day... A knight dressed in red came to East. Dahut asked him to come with her, and one night he agreed. A storm broke out in the middle of the night, and the waves could be heard smashing against the gate and the bronze walls. Dahut said to the knight, let the storm rage. Now, did you, did you, did you hear that? Bronze walls? Does that sound familiar? The gates of the city are strong, and it is King Gradlon, my father, who owns the key, the only key attached to his neck. The knight replied, replied, your father the king sleeps. You can now easily take his key. Dahut stole the key from her father and gave it to the knight, who was none other than the devil. The devil, in another version of the story, a wine beset of Dahut herself, then opened the gate. Because the gate was open during the storm and at high tide, a wave as high as a mountain collapsed on east. King Gradlon and his daughter climbed on Morvark, his magical horse, St. Winwillow, etc., etc., etc. 
and Gradlon took refuge in Quimper, which became his new capital. That is the Atlantis story from the perspective of the Atlanteans, or you know, people living there who were oppressed by the Atlanteans, since it's a bad story. And it goes on. I'm showing you more and more and more. This submerged forest I showed you is in the area of the, in, it's called in English, the Lowland Hundred, the Contraire Gwaelith. I'm not, I don't know how to pronounce Welsh, but I, I can sort of almost, no, I can't do a Welsh accent. Don't worry about that. Um, and this was the Welsh Atlantis. This was unbelievable. And there is so much physical evidence. It says in 1770, Welsh antiquarian and scholar Roger Owen Pugge reported seeing sunken human habitations about four miles or 6.4 kilometers off the Caradian coast between the rivers of Ustwif and Tafi. This is unbelievable. There's more. The Saar, this is called the Zahn. Look, I'm not going to pronounce that. Look, gun. Okay, whatever. Look at this. This is a road. And I'll put a link below. This is a road which goes into the sea. And there's quite a few in this area. That's not even the good one. The good one is this. The Zahn revealed at low tide. And it just stretches off in a straight line into the water. And that is unbelievable. And this is where there were sunken kingdoms. This could be a lee line shooting off into the distance, a straight road designed to uh, approach the capital somewhere which has sunk. And, you know, another flood, 1530, St. Felix's flood, large parts of Flanders and Zealand, Zealand were washed away, including the Verdronken land van Reimerswald. Okay, according to Audrey M. Lambert, quote unquote, all of Oost Vettering, the East Vettering, and etc., etc., was lost, save for only the town of Reimersville. You want to see? You want to see what this, what, the, what the, the, the town that was saved looked like after it was saved? This is it. Basically, you had a nice town, and afterwards you had destruction. So I've shown you example after example after you know, you get the picture. This was a massive disaster zone. This could have been what inspired the story of Atlantis. Thank you very much.